Hi everyone, Janie here, and look who I have with me, Matthew from the Southerners Northern Garden. He has the best YouTube channel, I love it, and I'm so excited I get to be here to see his garden. Yeah, we're going to cultivate. Yes, uh, we are. Yep, we're gonna Jenny's go. He's going Sunday, I'm going Monday. Yeah, I'm actually headed there right after this, right after we finish this. So you at least get a day to rest, yes. and then we gotta go. But it's a little bit sprinkling here in Ohio, but I think we can handle it. I will pass, pretty usual. I wanna see your garden anyway. I know. So, all right, let me turn the camera around. Okay, hey, sir. So here we have a lot of the Proven Winners annuals that they're trialing for 2024. So we have Cherry Drop, uh, Saffron Finch. Here's pretty. the Hoopla. It's kind of hidden by this coleus. Oh yeah. Uh, this one was Bermuda Beach. I like the combination you did. Yeah. This is really interesting. The Red Hawk. Uh, potato vine. Pretty. I think what? there's an imperial blue. So it looks like the it's, cherry drops taking over everything. Yeah, and <laughs> and um, we had a lot of rain, so it's a little floppy yeah. right now. Yeah. But are these Boston? Those are just Boston ferns. Oh yeah, gosh, and they look, look really at good. That. Aren't not beautiful? Everything's on drip irrigation. You it can is. see it up there. So oh, it all yeah. gets watered twice a day. I do it once in the morning and oh. once in the evening for like six to eight minutes each time. So really short period of time. Oh, but it's enough to keep them happy. Okay, anyway. so your drip does it go up? Yeah, so you can see it here. Because I've always wondered if the water... It runs up the... So we have the backflow and the hose connection down uh -huh. here, but it runs up the side of the oh. porch and down, and it's yeah. the white uh, tubing yeah. for, to match this, but they so also have black and tan. It. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. And then it runs down right here as well to these containers. You got it all set. Yeah, takes that's, care of itself all summer. That's Don't so do nice. Anything. I've always been nervous about having the irrigation go up, like there wouldn't be enough pressure, but I've honestly never tried it. Yeah, so. it's generally not a problem. Your standard that's hose should have enough pressure to do that. If you're connecting a lot of line with a small one quarter inch tubing, you might run into some pressure issues, but generally short links like that's not a problem. Not a problem. What's this over here? This is a... I did not plant this, but this is a blue spruce. Uh, I don't know if it's like a bird's nest spruce. It's grown so much since we purchased this house. It's big, uh, it's beautiful. Originally it was like probably several feet in several years ago, but since oh I took goodness. over the garden after we bought it and it gets plenty of water and love, it's, beautiful. it's gotten really big. It's so. so pretty. Yeah. As someone coming from California who really can't do stuff like this, yeah. my eye is drawn. Blue spruces around here tend to get needle casts and drop a lot of their needles. You'll oh, probably yeah. see that on some of my neighbor's trees. Mm -hmm. And I took out a blue spruce and another spruce that was having that issue. But these don't tend to have that issue, which is nice. And so they still look really, really great. And there's actually a bird's nest that stays in here every year. Oh, cute. Baby birds. Oh, how sweet. And then your hostas. Oh my yeah. goodness. All of these hostas came from Facebook Marketplace several years ago. Are you it was serious? like three dollar starts from serious? someone oh, divides. That's so cool. And they've gotten massive. Oh my goodness, that is so beautiful. And what kind of hydrangea is that one? Uh, the one in the back is puffer fish, the white one. Oh, we nice. have some endless summer. Um, this is bloom struck, mm -hmm. and then right in front here is pop star, which they're just now starting to bloom. To come out. Uh, I got these as bare root directly from endless summer earlier this year, oh. so there's a lot of dead branching I need to cut off. But you can see the nice yeah. little flower here. These yeah. are reblooming, so they're looking really good. Matthew, this is just gorgeous. Your whole garden is just oh man. I really love how this turned out this year. This area was completely redesigned. Yeah. This is where one of the green spruces was last year and I tore everything out <gasps> last fall and then designed this over winter and bought all the plants and planted it you this spring. You did good. You it's did It's really pretty. So good. So we've got begonias here at the bottom, mm -hmm. some sun patient, a ring of sun patients. There's a Let's Dance Can Do Hydrangea, and then a um, Red Obelisk Beach, it's, which is really pretty. It's so pretty. Oh my goodness. These, these impatience, I have to try those for sure. These sun patients are, and this is a more shadier side of the house, mm -hmm. so these don't get as much sun, so they may not be blooming as much on the other side of the garden. You'll see there's a different variety, but they are blooming their heads off. Really? So these are really bulking up though. They were real tiny when I planted them. They're looking good. I mean, by the end of the season, this whole area is just going to be It's going to be full, yeah. Really pretty. Okay. And here is my incredible hydrangea hedge that's is. pretty popular. 
Here's what um, I will be copying Matthew on in <laughs> my it, new property. It's five years old and this is kind of north facing. So, it's so pretty. There's this just, neighbor over here next to you. I they mean, love it. Yeah. Everybody loves it because you can see it as everybody this drives is, by. This is gorgeous. This is so incredibly beautiful. So, so in between we have emerald green arborvitae. Okay. Uh, the hydrangeas were planted five years ago from three gallon containers and they have just gotten progressively bigger. They're just now starting to fade a little bit a week or so okay. ago. They were solid white blooms. Like here's a fresher one so oh, you can see how white yeah. they were. But now they're to the age where they could be cut and dried oh, okay. for arrangements if you wanted to do some dried arrangements. Because you have to wait a little bit. Yeah, because if you these. cut them too early, they'll just wilt more okay. easily. So they get a little papery and then you can cut on them. and. This is so beautiful. Are you, are these being held up? Are they staked up? I did stake these. So this year is the first year I staked these because they've gotten so big mm -hmm. and we have rain. Sometimes we have thunderstorms that come the opposite way than normal. Okay. And they usually blow these over really bad, but I actually took some uh, rod. Really, it's kind of like a rebar that I got from oh, yeah. Menards, which is the local think. Midwest, like Home Depot Lowe's yeah. right there, and you can see it. Yeah. And just made hoops since uh, braced them from three sides, front oh. and the sides, and it's kept them upright they really look well this season. Perfect. They look perfect. Yeah. I mean, I know invincibles are supposed to not droop as much yeah, they, as the Annabelles, but these are like, these are so good. Yeah. These are so, what are these? Five and a half feet tall. Yeah. I would say, oh, look at the bee. How cute. Yeah, and these are good pollinators. They're constantly covered with pollinators. There's a smell. You probably can't smell it now because it's, they're going out of bloom a little bit yeah. and it's raining, but normally there's a really nice, wonderful scent coming off of them. Oh man, this is so beautiful. This, I mean, this is, of course, this is my favorite part of your garden. I love I it. I know, it's really nice. Okay beautiful we have a summer wine nine bark on standard which just means tree form here which is really pretty in the spring with its blooms but the foliage year round is or at least during the growing season is really it's lovely so pretty too. i don't think i've ever seen a nine bark in a standard form yeah we got that from nate torps which oh, is a where we local garden today. center where we visited today matthew took they have great uh, things there he took us to two garden centers around here really really cool nate torps was one of them and it was it was amazing Oh, look at this. What is this? That is Olivia Alston, oh. which is a David Alston rose. Really nice scent to it as well. Beautiful. Planted that a couple years ago. This is a hedge of bobo hydrangeas, which I are just now coming bobos. into bloom. They're really floriferous. And so by the, in a few more weeks, they'll just be covered with blooms. Oh, fun. You can see all the baby blooms here How starting up. How old are these up. bobos? This, this hedge was planted in 2020, right after the patio was installed. Oh, okay. So okay. relatively new, also planted from three gallon shrubs. And, Jeez, this um, is beautiful. You are coming the along real nicely. King. I am, yeah. <laughs> we call Sky from Hamilton House Designs Hydrangea Queen, Yeah. but Matthew is the Hydrangea King. Um, hold on, what kind of hooker is this? This is that so pretty. That is Red Rover, it's uh, so and it is pretty. gorgeous. I really love that variety. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. Makes a really nice edge, and in the fall, it kind of looks like fallen leaves. Oh yeah. Um, so there's a little, oh, it's a little weedy right now, but eh. still pretty. That's just. I'm sure once I get home from my trip, mine is going to be covered in weeds. Busy July. Yeah. We have some small oaks here called Kindred Spirit. Oh. These are very upright. They get three to five foot wide and mm -hmm. 20, 30 foot tall. Wow. Um, so they're a nice privacy screening hedge here. There's about five of them I think I've planted. Beautiful. Um, this is Proudberry Coralberry, oh. which is a proven winter shrub. Yeah. It's, it's one to, I can't grow and I wish I could. I know, it's really lovely in Gosh. the fall, but it's starting to produce its oh, yeah. flowers and oh, berries here soon. So. Oh, that's beautiful. This is my Hookra River that kind of failed, but you can see, you can see there's... Oh, yes. This is what else I was trying to copy mm -hmm. you on. You had this great idea of putting all these different, different colors. Colors, yeah. yeah. And I planted them from small plugs. You can see the ones that were stronger came back pretty well. Yeah. A lot of them did not make it over yeah. the winter. Um, hey, you know what? It's a fantastic idea and I'll yeah. always credit you. Yeah. So when I do it and succeed. <laughs> my full size gallon hookah. Spend a little bit more money. Yeah. <laughs> I get why you did it though. Yeah. I totally get it. This is Limelight Prime, which Beautiful. I was, I purchased, so Proven Winners released this, a few small of them 
think it was two years ago, mm -hmm. uh, early, and I purchased them from their website directly and got my hands on one of the first people. Good for you. In the small batch. And then I grew them in a container the first year to bulk up the root system. And you know, these have done so well. I've had no burning. Yeah. Because the root system, me bulking them up. Good for was you. So good. They're, they're um, so good. Like, and the color is so really good. nice, yeah. And I like the color of the stems too, if you guys can see yeah, the stems a are a little red. bit more red. It's just, you can, you can look at it and you can tell the difference between limelight prime and regular limelight. Ooh, what are these? <laughs> Those these? are the clematis, clematis. Oh. stand by me. It's the typical blue. Oh, so you can yeah. see one right here. It does rebloom a little bit, but it's mostly bloomed out. And these are the seed heads, but oh, they're still so really pretty. pretty. Those are really pretty. And this is a blue chiffon. It's just starting to bloom. Starting to come. Rose of Sharon little wet that's so fun and then this beautiful day lily which one's this uh, i have a tag down there but i don't know i have a lot of different day lilies Do this you? was called china grove plantation oh that's pretty and there's a this is the red bud that we were talking about oh, rising yeah. sun and so at this time of year it typically kind of fades to all green but yeah. you can see as the weather starts cooling off it starts putting out yellow which turns to orange which turns to green so it kind of looks like it's always uh, a sunset or a sunrise. It's so pretty. I I want one of these. These are five through nine, just so you guys know. I've already looked it up. I just think it's so beautiful. I'm just a sucker for red buds. Yeah. Oh, look at that. There's just a bunch of random stuff in here. There's but look more at of this. The path. This is one of those red rover. How big it's gotten. Man, um, that is a good hookera. Yeah, it's That's done really, really well. This good is the one. biggest one I've had, and it was planted from a 72 count plug tray. It was and that's Dang. how big it's gotten in two years oh my so goodness really vigorous it's getting a lot of sun here yeah so they can take the sun uh really well and wow. you can see how good it looks no burning or anything yet it's so pretty even though Matthew. the drought we had is this another prime this is pinky winky oh, which is, is really beautiful oh. you can see how open the yeah. panicles are yeah. and they'll just continue to elongate so how uh, many hydrangeas do you have i have Close to 150. Are you serious? On this little third of an acre. Yeah, oh there's just a lot of small ones. Like there's 16 in okay. these, uh, what are those? Wee whites over there. Oh, okay. So some in bulk. There's a lot just tucked here and there. Some of the bigger ones that. though. So there's, there's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of hydrangeas. It is. But let me walk down here. Let me see in here. It's a lot of random stuff tucked back here. Whoa. There's some beautiful cone flowers, which I can never remember the name of. But they're so pretty. Uh, this is Big Bang Spirea. So it's kind of bloomed out, but it emerges like a yellow and orange oh. in the spring. That's really pretty. What's this pretty like white? Airy one right here. That is Calament or Calamantha. You it's the species variety. You, I told I you, about, you it. about it. It's so before. pretty. <laughs> and it blooms all summer. I asked him about that earlier on this trip and I remember him telling me. Yeah, I'm, Walters. Yeah. I, I, I'm drawn to that one. It's I really wish gorgeous. I could plant it. There's some over here around a boxwood topiary. It's a that's good really one. Nice. It's a really good one. Ooh, I like this grass too. That is. I can't remember the name of that one. Okay. I planted it a couple years ago. But I'm not really... the best on my grass names. Yeah, that's all right. You're, hey, you've remembered a ton so far, so I'm really impressed. You're doing good. Ooh, look at this pretty one. That's called White Perfection. Ooh. It is really beautiful echinacea. That's a good one. The petals are so sharp and it's so crisp and clear. Yeah, right? That's a really good one. Oh my gosh, look at the back of his house. We'll get to that, but look at the back of your house. Yeah. Man. And all of this is the, around the patio was planted in for the most part in 2020. Okay. Um, I did have, we have really heavy clay soil here. Uh, I planted all of this and then I noticed that a lot of the hydrangeas and stuff were dying. They weren't getting sufficient drainage and I actually had to pull all of this stuff out in July of that year. I came through and added a bunch of perlite, mm -hmm. um, some compost, some mushroom compost and tilled it all in and the plants love it now but i actually lost the original hydrangea limelight standard that was here oh. and i had to replace it well but this one looks happy done. now but you can see just based on the plants they're the same on both sides but these are much bigger yes because the soil i never amended this side of the bed because oh. it drained pretty good oh my goodness but this side of the look bed look at the difference is oh my goodness happier just because of the drainage so isn't in that interesting soil. Look at this Especially one. the barberry. The barberries. Yeah. And these were planted from four inch containers, I think. Tiny little. And they things. started off the same size. This is the Sun Joy. 
it's like yellow pillar or something. It's the upright one. That is crazy to see what a difference each side makes. Yep. Based, just based on soil health and drainage and everything. And you can like even see the bobos over here get bigger than those over there. Over there. Oh yeah. man, that is so interesting. Yeah. Well, hey, that's a good reminder to us all. Focus soil on soil health. health. Yep. Yeah. And amendments. Oh. Uh, this is just a mix of things. We got a blue shadow father gilla, which I really love. Hmm. It just has this beautiful powdery blue foliage. I've never heard of that one. Um, I don't know that you can grow those there, but I'm not, not sure. I'm usually more knowledgeable about the lower zones, not the upper yeah, zones. Yeah, most people are, I've noticed. <laughs> yeah. That's I'm, out, I'm out by myself like, well, well what about up, uh, what about the high zones? Yeah, <laughs> so this is a proud, another proud berry coral berry. Coral this berry. is the bigger one. It's beautiful. Uh, it was planted earlier and it just gets loaded with berries. What kind of tree is this? This is a willow um, that I planted, oh, you planted six this. years ago. Yeah, oh it came goodness. home in my vehicle it was real tiny oh. this is how quickly willows grow dang so it's beautiful caution it's also a nice growing tree but yeah. they can be messy this one's been okay yeah so far but it's beautiful i'm concerned that it's going to outgrow the size on the label because yeah. it really loves this spot it's just so our happy. soil's so heavy clay and there's lots of water and that's one reason i planted it to kind of soak up some of that water and it has loved it good its location so. obviously have if it if this is a six-year-old tree my goodness yeah now i have to point out this is another one i can't grow alliums this yeah. is millennium so millennium, one of the older I ones grow, yeah or the serendipity is that the other one serendipity is over here and you can look and stand back and see the difference in foliage okay. so the serendipity is bluer so this is millennium and over oh, yeah. there you can see it's just it's hard to show on screen on the camera but yeah. it is a bluer yep i see it um, i can definitely color. see it which one do you like better uh i i don't really doesn't matter Care. so much to me i do love the serendipity because it's just a different contrast so if you have a lot of greens it'll stand out a little more oh, okay with other perennials with a little different foliage there oh, this is so pretty oh you're good you're good yeah. I like I like how you plant stuff because some of it's in lines and drifts and some of it's just kind of mixed in. Yeah, so this this bed is actually was planted in 20. So it's this one used to be shaped like an avocado around. The, I used to call it the avocado bed around the willow. Okay. And there was a little jut out here for the hydrangea. And when we put in the fence, I expanded it. So this bed is was planted in 2021. Um, so relatively new. I've got lots of fancy daylilies that are just the perfect time in bloom right yeah, now. Yeah, seriously. Beautiful. This is so pretty. These cone flowers I've always been really impressed with. I've showed them a lot recently. It's one in a melon by Proven Winners and Walters Gardens. Pretty. And what's the rose growing on this? What do you call this circle thing? It's called a moon gate. Yeah. Um, and the rose is uh, Teasing Georgia oh. by David Austin. Oh, so a little, I have one. little southern flair, yeah. Oh, that's so great. I have one in a pot that I'm waiting to plant. Yeah. I'm waiting until I move, though, because I don't want to plant it <laughs> in the old house. These are tater tots They're that so I planted cute. a couple years ago. Are they going to grow together or are they going to be separate like they that? They were intended to be kind of like a hedge a boxwood alternative to mm -hmm. a hedge yeah um, they're doing they're doing really well they're really liking they it look they put on cute, a lot of just like this, this. yeah right like just like that they look really really cute yeah so oh, i don't know i think proven winners i had a viewer tell me that proven winners changed their estimated sizing on them uh -oh. so when i purchased them they were supposed to get one and a half or one to two foot tall and wide uh -huh. i think they've adjusted that to like two and a half to three and a half uh -oh. and so they're probably <laughs> may get on, end up getting bigger maybe you can take out every other that's one that's what someone recommended maybe put it yeah. over here or something yeah. like that but arborvitaes do really well in my garden they're not necessarily deer friendly but do you get uh, a lot of deer no we have never had any deer well that's great any deer. just bunnies did you plant these trees back here? Those are green giants and I planted them. They were like 12 inches to 18 <gasps> inches tall five years ago. When oh I my goodness. Them. So the green giants do grow really quickly. And like I said, the arborvitae love this location. These so. are so pretty. I don't think I can grow green giants either. I know. You know, this whole garden tour is just to see what I can I <laughs> copy you from, right? <laughs> So these are the wee white hydrangeas. Man, they're um, tiny. They're so tiny. Yeah, they were just planted. I guess they were planted about a year and a half ago as well. I didn't know you were certified wildlife. Yeah, you can go to this website here and get a uh, certification based on the water, the features in your garden, which Good is like refuge you. and water access. Yeah. And we have bunnies and they've gotten so used to me being outside here that they just kind of 
you know, hang around while I'm yeah. out here gardening, which is kind of interesting. Oh, good for you. Oh, that's fantastic. This is really pretty, the wee whites. Yeah, they've done much better in the backyard. I did have one in the front yard that got a little crispy, but for some reason these are looking they look much good. better so far. They yeah. look really cute. And look, you got a little pot back there you can barely see. I know, it's the rain. We've had a storm already today. So yeah, it, it's a it, quite downfall, a big storm down, too. Downfall. Um, so these are a lot of the proven winners annuals um, as well. And so this one was Pink cashmere. cashmere. Yeah. That's my favorite new one. Yeah, it is really pretty. And look how vigorous it is. So um, I saw, I was at Four Star and they did the pink cashmere with the dark Ipomoea mm -hmm. and it was beautiful. Yeah. And I'm totally going to do it next year. Yeah. Is this more of the white perfection? That's more of the white perfection. It's so pretty. I like this. I'm going to have to. And this is more of the calamint with yes. the boxwood topiary. So this it is just, so good. It gets huge. It's um, so good. It's such a good plant. Very, Those of you that can plant this, I'm so jealous. Very strong perennial. So it's similar oh. to a cat mint, uh, okay. same family. So I think, I don't do know you, if you run your hands through it, if it'll have a, yeah, it's got a minty smell. It's really nice. Oh yeah. Oh man. Yeah, so. That's beautiful. Do you have to cut that back? Like you cut that cat I mint? don't touch it until the end of the fall and then I cut <laughs> it back. And it just continues. It looks like this nearly all summer. It's so pretty. It's, and it's so covered pretty. With pollinators right now there's bees all over it oh my goodness that is such a beautiful plant yeah. so pretty we this, always want what we can't have right yeah and this is a annual it's a red obsidian banana wow that's just loving it right here in this location oh the sun came the out the sun just came just out and it was humid. like like whoa yeah. <laughs> what are these little puffs that is a um yarrow called peter cottontail and what? it's a different <laughs> Just a very different yarrow. I have never whoa, 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 seen whoa, whoa. this. This is beautiful. Look at that bee. That bee is happy. That's beautiful. So pretty. Then we have cherry chocolate hibiscus, mm -hmm. which mine are starting. They've already got buds on them, so They're, they should be blooming probably earlier than usual. They I got, mean, look at that one. That one's about I know, ready they to got go. started earlier because we were so warm so early and they were popping out of the ground like a month ahead of really? what they usually would. And then we cooled off a little bit, slowed them down. But yeah. they definitely love this one's opening. Oh, oh, how it's funny. It's wet, but. So tomorrow. Maybe. Tomorrow you might have a bloom. When I left for the trip, I had two blooms on my plant. Oh. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll These see are you when I get really home. Good. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to have to get some of this echinacea. This is perfect. It's really beautiful. Is that yeah. Walters? Uh, I don't think I got these from Walters. Okay. They're not a proven winner's brand. They're just, uh, I don't know if it's just a generic out there, okay. but it's really beautiful. I'll have to look for it. That's so pretty. This is a peony. Mm -hmm. Ito or Ito, I think I oh, always yeah. pronounce it incorrectly. Yep. This grass is Lemon Squeeze, which is a new introduction by oh. Walters and Proven Winners pretty. last year or the year before. You know, I saw one in their display gardens. Mm -hmm. This one looks way better. <laughs> yeah, this one's, it's been there for a while. It's really happy. This one looks really happy. This is my favorite new Yjila. It looks like a coleus. It's, um, what's it called? Midnight Sun? I, I think can, that's what it is. I can see it. I can it's see that. It's gorgeous, though. It's very pretty. It, it, it emerges green, and then all of a sudden it turns bright it's, red in the sun it's really pretty especially it's really pretty next to that grass mm -hmm. that's perfect perfect combination is what is this this is a i think it's a lavender twist red bud Gosh. so it's a weeping it's beautiful red bud i got it i think i got it at lowe's on discount you one did for like 50 dollars. oh my god aren't so, those the best plants i know they're so good oh look you've got more of the green giants here like, yeah it's like a whole room it's like when lisa Talking uh, about garden rooms. Talking about yeah. garden rooms. You that have one. That was the one. goal here. You did a good job. This and then your dahlias. My raised bed vegetable garden. I actually tied them up of it, and it looks like I may have broken the stem because it's getting a little wilty. But well, these and all are the really rain. Beautiful. Yeah. All the rain has been. What are these? Uh, those are solar power um, sweet potato vine. Wow, that's really beautiful. That's really dark. Really this one beautiful. over here, you can see next to all my scrap, is real happy. This was a little four-inch container planted a couple weeks wow. or a couple months ago. That is so and beautiful. It's yeah, it, and the leaves are a little green until they hit sun uh -huh. and then they turn. And then they're that dark purple. color. Look at how cute this is. 
What do you, is this clover? This is clover and I was using it as a weed suppressant. Oh because yeah? Because this area would get kind of weedy and that way I didn't have to remulch and it's actually done a really good job of mm. conserving water and suppressing the weeds. It's so. really cute. I really it, enjoyed it. It makes the whole garden look cute. Do you like mow it? Do you come here and I mow? do mow it a couple times a year. Yeah. But it's done really well. This is technically supposed to be what they call micro clover or mini clover. Yeah. Uh, and I've talked to people on my channel about, I don't know that I would buy. It's really expensive oh, okay. um, for just a little bit of seed. Mm -hmm. And you can see how big this clover is. There's not a whole lot mini to it. So. Then compared to regular clover. Yeah. Yeah. I could, I could see that. In the lawn where it's mowed regularly, it does stay smaller. So I did add it to the lawn for some like urine stop spot, dog urine oh, spot yeah. prevention because it's not affected by the dog urine. Yeah. And it's thickened up the lawn quite well. And it's a nitrogen fixer, so it adds nitrogen oh. back and you don't have to fertilize as much. But is that it why does your lawn's so green? Here. Yeah, it looks good right Jeez, now. Jeez, it looks perfect. We've had lots of rain too. So. It looks perfect. It's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> looks pretty I'm good. I'm not right jealous, now. I swear. I also just cut it this morning. So. Oh okay that might be it. <laughs> <laughs> that might have something to do with it. These are the Boom Chocolata oh, yes. we were geraniums talking about these. that you just saw at the garden center earlier. They are massive, but they bloom all summer. They could probably use a cut back and might come back and bloom a little more, but uh -huh. I usually don't cut them back. I don't love to cut back my perennials because they end up looking kind of like this you know, and scraggly. I'm the same way. Yeah. I don't like cutting my plants back. I don't even like cutting my annuals back. Mm -hmm. But then eventually it's like, oh, I wish I had done that, you know? But it's just it's really, really hard for me to cut them back. Like this, I I mean, it would be hard for me to cut that and back. it's so soft, like the buds are oh, beautiful. velvety. And you were saying the petals fall in the fountain. Yeah, the petals fall in the fountain because they get much bigger than I thought they were originally going to get. They love this location, <laughs> and so I've had issues with them clogging the fountain this what year. What is this? It's a little uh, chlorine. Oh, to keep it clean? To keep it clean a little bit. Oh, does it work? Yeah, it's originally for a spa. It helps a little oh, bit, but okay. it probably doesn't have anything in it because I'm not the best about putting actually <laughs> maintenance. <laughs> not so much. I have the same problem. Yeah. <laughs> this is so pretty. Okay, one last look backyard and then we'll go to the front yard. Isn't this beautiful? Oh my goodness, this is this is like a little paradise back here. So one of my new favorite characters is, is this Feather Falls, which we actually oh. saw at Walters, and it was massive at Walters, and mine just keeps getting bigger. Uh, but so are you worried? But it's such a good, not really, mm, but it's such a good perennial. It's beautiful. Um, and they've taken really well to the garden. You do a really good job mixing your greens. Yeah. Mixing your foliage colors. I do you... love different colors, even if it's just leaf colors, not yeah. so much blooms. Yeah. But yeah. So do you think about that a lot when you Yes. Do you? When I'm looking to put something there, it's definitely pick something that contrasts so it stands out a little more. Huh. Yeah, I can see it in your garden. It really it really makes a big difference. Makes everything still look lush and green, but in, it has an interest to it. Yeah. Pretty. This one looks a little weedy. This is a just a perennial that to me looks a little weedy yeah. and I was trialing it out and you don't like I don't it. love it. So it's still pretty, but yeah. it just kind of looks to me more like a weed than I I like the like sedum. The is this back in this black? This is back in black and I love it. It is so good. I need this. Look how big that is. I need this in my life. And this is just a small grouping, but. Is this three of them? I think there's one, two, three. There's probably like five or six Oh, five here. or six. Okay, um, that's good to but know. But like this you can tell is one. Yeah. How big it is. Oh, that's so pretty. And the goal with this side, this is the south facing side of the house and it just blisters during the summer with oh, heat yeah. and so there are really there's drip to the arbor body at the back but i redid this bed last fall so a lot of the things are small and i never added drip back so they get a little overspray from the sprinkler heads but i was trying to contrast some colors here so we yeah. have like a brigadoon sedum which or this is a brigadoon uh st john's wort oh okay uh, and it's actually coming up everywhere which i just mentioned oh. in a video on my channel it's a spreader guys so. <laughs> be careful be careful with it. What um, is this one with the berries? That is a Monrovia St. John's Ward as well. So oh. this is a St. John's and that as well, but these produce really beautiful berries. Oh, That's another one. I, uh, I can't remember the name of that series, but they have a series and each one of them produces a different Different, different color. Berry. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so more of the back in black here. These are some of the bubble bath alliums. So these get really big bloom heads. That's why they're a little different. A little taller than the hmm. Millennium and Serendipity. What are these pinky colored? Look at that. 
those are our variety. Those are called uh, Fire Chief, <gasps> and I beautiful. love them. I just planted them this year. Those are so pretty. They put on a lot pretty. of grows, really gorgeous. Yeah. Those are so pretty. And knife contrast. They, they like glow. Yeah. They're gorgeous, really pretty. So here you can see all the sun patients over here and how much yeah. bigger they are. Yeah. This is, they get more sun, I think, yeah. just over here. Which is what they're for, sun patients, yeah. right? Yeah. I've just, I've never tried them and I need to try them in my garden. Now this is your, Southern magnolia. magnolia. Yeah, Bracken's yeah. Brown Beauty. You had to have a magnolia. It's really pretty. It's <laughs> done so well so far that it got settled in a little bit. Bring your roots up here to your northern garden. I know. Oh, These I are love the it. new uh, Dark Side of the Moon Astilbe oh. by Proven Winners and Walters Gardens. How do you like them? I, they have, this is full sun. Wow. They have, they're not crisping. There's crisping up at all. It's, they're doing really, really good. That's me. What is this cute little thing right here? That's an angelonia. I think it's called raspberry or something similar oh, to that. Cute. I'm very new to annuals. A lot of my garden is perennials and shrubs, and so this is really the first year I kind of delved into a lot more annuals. In what the do you think about it, doing annuals? It's hard here yeah. in our soil conditions being so much clay. Yeah. I mean, some of them are really loving it. Yeah. In previous years, there's just certain things that do good and certain things that don't. Yeah, you got to figure out what works for you. Yeah, like petunias in the ground. No they way. won't do anything here. Really? No, nope. they'll they'll die off. But Too these sun much patients water. are loving it. I don't know what it is. It just but you can see I was having an issue. We've got blue suede shoe salvia, and those are also blue suede shoe salvia. Isn't half that of funny? the ring is fine. Half right here. Of it's not. So here's a blue suede blue suede shoe salvia. There's another one right there. There's another one right there. And then boom, there's a big one right there. Yeah, Isn't so that three the of them are fine. Thing. The other three are struggling and you would think that these three would be better because they'd have more sun to dry out quicker mm -hmm. Isn't that funny i don't know huh maybe you we, need to mend your whole garden i know well <laughs> i put lots of mulch down for yeah. years so it is getting a little better but i don't know we had a fit three weeks of like drought and so that could be they weren't getting as much water oh. and they're a little stunted but oh yeah they're coming out of it they're starting to green yeah, up a little there's bit there's some new green growth on them we got some liriope down here. This is just some variegated liriope. Pretty. Everybody asks what it is all the time because it's so bright. And I yeah. don't know the variety. It was here when I moved in and it was one or two clumps. Look and I up divided Peter it and Pan. Made Peter Pan. Look up Peter Pan. It looks like it could be Peter Pan. Does it bloom for you? Mm -mm. Not at all? Not at all. Never has, I don't think. Mm. But I literally took a saw. The roots on those liriope are like just. You yeah, had, I had to saw it apart oh with my a landscape God. saw. Uh, <laughs> That's to amazing. Get little tiny plugs, and I planted it all here, and it's They're finally filled up a little bit. They're beautiful. It is a weed trap, which I don't love. There's eh. lots of daffodils. I'm mean, not daffodils. Dandelions that grow in there. You know what? You're 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 distracted by the brightness, the so it doesn't even matter. <laughs> And then you have one of my favorite plants, Helen yeah, von Stein. I love that thing. I love that plant. And it looks so good in front of your Japanese maple. Yeah. And oh. then what that is a of? Crimson Queen. Oh, it's For gorgeous. For the first three years, it stayed pretty green. But yeah. now that it's established, it's staying red most of the summer, which uh, is really nice. I love that. I love the liriope all the way around here. Yep. Look at this. You did such a good job. And I really like this view right here back into this bed. You can see the arbor oh, yeah. and the magnolia yeah, but this is go. the tiny quick fire hydrangea from proven winners that's new and it's already turning oh, pink in the garden look really how tiny good it is it's so cute it's a panicle really small one of the i think it's the smallest panicle so how big is it supposed to get not much bigger than that are you serious uh, maybe a little it will probably fill out more um it's i had a wee white right here and it would just crisp up and burn really bad yeah. this one's burning a little bit but it was just planted last year, so yeah. that's to be expected yeah. for the first couple of years. You gotta give it a couple of years. And then what kind of alliums are these right here? Those are uh, Millennium as well. Oh, pretty. Behind then, them, there is a re ornamental oregano. That's Drops oh. of Jupiters. Oh my Dro goodness. Drops of Jupiter by Walters. It was introduced a couple of years ago. Oh, how fun. We've got a hedge of Hidcoat Lavender, which has been here for several years. The bees just love and it does so well. Do you cut this back? I cut it back. Last year I experimented I usually leave it all winter and I cut it back in the spring. Last year I experimented because it's a leaf trap and it traps a lot of leaves mm -hmm. and it makes a mess when I had to trim it. I cut it halfway back mm -hmm. in the fall, late winter or early winter. And we had that really cold weather and some of, I didn't lose a plant, but parts of the plant like this one right here like died right here. back. Yeah. Um, so I don't know that I would recommend that, but it also was kind of a fluke winter there. We dropped yeah. really cold really quickly. Yeah. So to, but to be safe, just cut it back in I the spring. I would cut it back in spring, even okay. if it is a pain. Yeah. Well, Matthew, thank you. 
Thank you for coming. This is gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you for taking me all around to the garden yeah. centers today. I had so much fun. Yeah, very good trip. And I want you to close out the video. Okay. With what you say. All right. In a world full of hate, be a light. Take care, everyone. See you soon. <laughs> I love it.